Brian Clough's career is the stuff of legends. The tales of how he took Nottingham Forest to consecutive European Cup victories, scored over 200 goals in his playing career, and his infamous spell in charge of Leeds are enshrined in footballing folklore. But it was Clough's work, alongside Peter Taylor at Derby, that saw him truly put on the map. He took a side stuck in the second division, and alongside Peter Taylor, took them to heights they could not have dreamed of, before all of a sudden, it fell apart. This is the story of Brian Clough, The Derby Years. Brian Clough and Peter Taylor started their coaching career together at Hartley Pools. They were a club on a shoestring budget who had to reapply for election to the Football League on several occasions. Despite the limitations, as well as the dispute of the chairman, the pair took them to a credible 8th place finish. In 1967, Clough and Taylor would make the move down to the East Midlands to manage 2nd Division, Derby County. It was a bold appointment by Chairman Sam Longson, who had appointed them on the advice of former Newcastle and Sunderland player Len Shackleton. The club had not played in the top flight for 14 years and had only won a solitary FA Cup in their history. Clough and Taylor's first season at the helm did little to bring excitement about the future ahead, as they actually finished one place lower than they had the previous season. In the summer though, Clough and Taylor revamped the club. Players were brought in who would help form the spine of Clough's team for many years to come. Midfielder John McGovern, who played for Clough at Hartlepool, was signed, along with Scottish forward John O'Hare, who Clough had coached at Sunderland's Youth Academy. Clough and Taylor also personally visited the home of 19-year-old Tranmere defender Roy McFarlane's to persuade him to sign. The true marquee signing was in the summer of 68, though, with Scottish defender Dave Mackay. He had captained both Hearts and Tottenham to league titles. Although he was in the twilight of his career, Clough and Taylor knew he still had it in him. Clough was ruthless, with only four of the squad he had inherited remaining. He also sacked non-playing staff such as the club secretary, a scout, and a pair of tea ladies he found laughing after the club lost the game. Clough taking such control would bring the club results, but it would begin to work Sam Longson. Glory, though, would soon follow. In the 68-69 campaign, Derby romped their way to victory in the second division, winning it by seven points and going on a 22-game unbeaten run along the way. Derby were back in the top flight, but Clough proved they were not there to make up the numbers. Derby finished ninth in their first season back, and Clough's profile continued to grow. Clough and Taylor continued to add to the squad. While Steve Mackay retired to go into management, Colin Todd was bought to Clough for a British record fee of £175,000, despite Clough telling the media earlier that day they couldn't afford him. Clough then sent a telegram informing Longson of the deal, something the board were far from pleased with. Derby would go on to finish in fourth place, and the 71-72 season would be their best ever. They went unbeaten in the first 12 league games, and as the season continued, they looked like contenders. A four-way title race opened up, with Clough's Derby, Bill Shankly's Liverpool, Don Revy's Leeds, and Malcolm Allison's Manchester City all in the race. Derby won the Texaco Cup, a competition for British teams not in European competitions along the way, but faced a number of losses in the winter months. However, they picked up after a new year, including a run of seven wins from eight games between mid-February and early April. The race would go to the end of the season and was eventually out of Derby's hands. A 2-0 loss away to Manchester City on the penultimate day put Derby's chances in jeopardy, but on the final day, a John McGovern goal sealed a 1-0 win over Liverpool. Derby had done their bit, but now could only sit back and hope. The title race was so tight that Manchester City topped the table after their final game, but could not win the title due to fixtures taking place between the teams below them. Derby finished the season on 58 points. Behind them, Leeds won 57 and Liverpool won 56, with both teams having a game in hand. Derby decided to flee the country, with Clough holidaying in the Isles of Scilly with his family, whilst Peter Taylor took the majority of players to Mallorca. Leeds had played Wolves, and Liverpool faced Arsenal. Peter Taylor arranged for a feed of the matches to come through to the hotel via his phone. The odds seemed stacked against them, but it turned out that the sun was shining on the Rams that day. Leeds lost to Wolves, and Liverpool drew with Arsenal. For the first ever time, Derby were champions of England. When interviewed on the radio about the result, Brian Clough said he didn't believe in miracles, but that one had occurred that night. 
Clough and Taylor had masterminded the impossible. They had taken a club with little glory, stuck in the second division, and defeated two of the best managers the English game has ever seen in a title race. They felt it was just the beginning, but whilst the champagne flowed, upstairs, Sam Longson was not a happy man. His relationship with Clough and Taylor continued to sour. In the summer of 72, Derby had arranged a pre-season tour of the Netherlands and West Germany. Brian Clough refused to go, as Sam Longson did not let Clough bring his family, and so Taylor took charge. Clough and Taylor briefly resigned to take charge of Coventry City, but went back on this after Longson offered them more money. Clough went behind the boards back again, when David Nish was brought in for £225,000, which did nothing but harm their relationship further. Derby finished 7th the next campaign, and incredibly reached the semi-finals of the European Cup, losing to Juventus. The game remains controversial, with accusations of corrupt refereeing and Juve players going into the officials' dressing rooms. After the game, Clough said he wouldn't speak to any cheating bastards, and then demanded his translator told the Italian press what he had said. Further tensions mounted with Clough's media appearances, with him criticising Derby supporters, the Derby board, Leeds United, and many others publicly. Longson ended up demanding that Clough reduce his media appearances. In October 1973, Sam Longson had called for Clough and Taylor to be sacked, but the board did not support him. Two days later, after Derby defeated Manchester United 1-0 at Old Trafford, Clough was seen making a V sign towards the stands. Longson accused Clough of making the gesture at Matt Busby, but it turned out Clough did it towards Longson due to how few tickets he had provided for the families of the club staff. Soon afterwards came the straw that broke the camel's back. Peter Taylor was asked to explain his job role to the board, at which point he had enough. Clough resigned on behalf of the two of them, in hope it would cause the board to oust Longson. However, Derby called their bluff. Sam Longson accepted the resignation. The Derby fans were outraged and protested profusely, demanding that the board resign and Clough and Taylor be reinstated. For their next game against Leicester, Brian Clough appeared in the crowd and soaked up their adoration. The players threatened to strike too, but soon Longson slammed the door shut for any reunion. Clough and Taylor's former star, Dave Mackay, took the job. There was now no way back to the baseball ground for the duo. There can be little doubt that had Clough and Taylor remained, they would have led Derby to further glory. Dave Mackay led the Rams to a further league title in 1975, and Clough and Taylor would lead Nottingham Forest to a league title and consecutive European Cups a few years later. Throughout Derby, people stared and wondered at what might have been. But rather than talking about what could have been, we should remember what was. Clough and Taylor produced one of football's great miracles, guiding a team nobody fancied to a position of champions of England against all the odds. It was the most unlikely rises the game has ever seen. It was the first of a number of miracles they would bring to the game, and whilst many are left imagining what more Clough and Taylor could have done at Derby, the miracle of 72 remains one of English football's great stories.